Okay, in the last tutorial we covered how to model the 3D sword right here. Uh, we covered how to use, um, how to modify the polygons and edit the vertices and the edges and all that. And so now we're going to cover how to texture or otherwise color our sword. Um, to do that, uh, we're going to want to put um, UVs on this object because without the UVs we don't know where to paint at. So in order to get the UVs we go to UV up here and UV editor will pull up the window. Um, also, in older versions of Maya, before 2016, you can also go over to Window, and UV Editor is right there. But 2016 also has it sitting right there now. Alright, so if I zoom out with the scroll wheel, you can see here we have our UVs. The UV coordinates should look like a sword, but as you can see, they don't. So I slide this over here, and we need to make the... Um, an image of this sword appear on here so we know where to paint in order for the materials to appear on the sword. Um, to do that, uh, there's also going to be some stretching that occurs and we need to um, adjust the stretching so that it's, it lays flat. Uh, in order to see the stretching, we're going to put a checker pattern on there because that's the easiest way to tell if there's stretching occurring. Um, to do that, we're going to go over to Window, Rendering Editor, and Hypershade. Once Hypershade is up, this is where we're going to edit our textures. We can also apply colors. So I'm going to go create a new Lambert color right here. So I'm going to click the Lambert name. And by doing so, put some uh, nodes in here, which we're not going to worry about right now. Um, you should see a Lambert 1 and a Lambert 2. Lambert 1, by default, is the original material that the scene comes with. Uh, so I just created a Lambert 2. If I double click on this Lambert 2, you'll see that it pops out the attribute editor right here. It's also sitting right here inside of the um, hypershade, so if you want to use it in here, it's fine, or you could use it over here. I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, and I can, to put the texture on here, because by default it's sitting with Lambert 1, I can take the middle mouse scroll wheel, push down to grab it, and drag this onto our sword. But we're not going to see any change occurring, because there is um, it's still a gray color. Now if I click on the color right here, I can pick a different color, let's say I slide this over to the red or the blue and I have another color. But I want to put specific textures on here and not so much the colors. So to do that, I click this little checkered pattern right here. By clicking this, it brings up an options of a whole bunch of uh, different things we can put on our color. I'm going to start with a checkered pattern just so I can see the distortions that are occurring in the UVs. So I'm going to click checker and it's now applied. Unfortunately, you can't see the texture pattern, and that's because we're in shaded mode and not texture mode. That's going to be a setting up here. The uh, shortcut is 4 on the keyboard will pull up wireframe, uh, 5 will pull up this smooth shade, and 6 on the keyboard will pull up the texture mode. Texture mode means you can see the textures that are on here, and the checker pattern is our texture. If I press 5, it'll go back to shaded mode where you just see colors. Uh, but we want to see textures now. Textures can take up a lot of processing power if you have an entire elaborate scene with high resolution textures. So in some cases you may want to turn them off if your scene starts lagging depending on the hardware in your computer. Um, but I'm going to leave this on so I can see what I'm doing. And as you can see, it should look like a checker pattern, but it's really not. It's kind of distorted. And that's what the problem is here, is that there's a lot of distortions. The checker pattern is accurate, and if I turn the map off by clicking this landscape kind of picture button, um, that'll turn the image off. And you can see that because the UVs are not matching the shape of a sword, it's causing distortions and the, the checkers are not matching as they should. So I'm going to turn the background image off just to make it a little more easier to see. And we can see there's some distortions, so we need to correct this. Uh, the easiest way to do this um, is to go over to what the sword selected, go to UV, and since the sword is pretty much flat, it's two-sided, and that's all we need to worry about for the most part. Uh, we're going to click the planar mapping, but don't click the word. Uh, we want to click the option box. By clicking the option box, it gives us an options uh, window, and by default, just clicking the word will take whatever options already set. Uh, we don't want to use the best plane. Generally, that's a better option to use, but in this case, because we want a straight-on projection, we're just going to use a regular bounding box. The x-axis uh, we're going to check to see which axis we're on. I'm going to click on the sword and click W on the keyboard for move. The move option is again over here, move, rotate, and scale. Uh, if I look at this, the blue arrow is Z. 
Red is X and green is Y. To tell what that is, you can see over here, blue is Z, red is X, and green is Y. So that's how I know what these uh, letters are corresponding to. So because I want to take the projection straight on the front of the sword, the red blue is Z, so I'm going to click the Z axis for mine. Depending on the angle your sword is facing, you may need to pick a different axis. And then when we're ready, we click the Apply button. And it automatically puts a box around here and looks more or less pretty accurate. Unfortunately, UVs aren't always accurate when it projects it uh, or maps it with the planar mapping. So we need to correct this so it looks a little more squarish. So I can take the uh, scale tool and I can stretch this upwards. And you can see that as I'm stretching upwards, it's lengthening the blade and thus restoring these rectangles to more of a square shape so I can tell that it's more accurate. Unfortunately, the sword needs to fit within the uh, upper right quadrant of here on the XY coordinate system. So if for some reason you also click off your sword and you lose the ability to scale and move, you can just drag a rectangle across, grab everything again, and go back to the scale button right here, and you can scale everything back in again. I'm going to reduce this down in size now so it fits inside of here, and I can zoom in and I can look at how the sword is fitting. Um, but the texture resolution is kind of large, and it'd be easier to see what's happening if they were smaller rectangles, I mean smaller checker patterns. So I'm going to go back to the, um, I guess I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to close this window. I'm going to go back to the UV, I mean the uh, texture now. So over here, Lambert 2, if for some reason your attribute editor isn't open, it's going to be this option right here. It's a shortcut, uh, it's the, well, the button to do that. The shortcut is Control A to open your attribute editor. Uh, Lambert 2 is the one that's already on there. Otherwise, you could go to the Hypershade and just double click this, and by double clicking it, it'll pull this up as well. Um, minimize that. I'm going to go over here to the color and click on this guy and click the next one forward. This one will go back to the main menu. Um, this one will go forward to the texture placement of how it's occurring. And over here by repeat UV, I can set this to something like, let's say, 25 by 25. By repeating the checker pattern, you can see that it makes the squares a lot smaller and easier to see any distortions. Now what you're going to notice is that it looks quite straight and like perfect, and both sides are accurate because it's a straight on view. Unfortunately, anything that's not straight on, like the sides, will streak backwards. So we can see that we have this black square right here, and it streaks straight backwards. It takes the very edge and pulls it back. And the same thing with the white one, it pulls it straight back. So instead of getting a regular checker pattern, we're getting distortions along the edges. And that's going to streak our textures. So to correct for this, we need to unfold and relax the outside edges. Um, but we can't unfold it while the sword is still one piece. So we need to split the sword in half. To do that, we're going to right click on this guy, hold the right click button, go to edge, and then we can take the edge and we're going to cut this edge. I'm going to put move on just to change the cursor so I don't accidentally scale something, but that's not important. Uh, if you double click this edge, you'll see that it selects the perimeter. Whatever edge you double click will try and uh, keep going in a straight line as well as it can. So I'm going to double click this, and as you can see, it selected more or less the perimeter of the sword, but it didn't finish all the way. So I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and double click this edge, which will continue around the rest of the way. So shift will add more to your selection, and I just needed to add the blade because it didn't select when I got the handle. So now that that's selected, I need to cut this in half. So to do that, there used to be options up here in earlier versions before 2016, but they modify the buttons, and so I'm going to use the older buttons. So if you go to Polygons and go to Cut UV Edges right here, this will cut the UV edge. It won't cut the polygons, it'll just cut the um, texture placement around the edge. So I click this option once they're already selected in orange, and it should cut. We don't really see the difference here, and if I try and move this, you can see that it's still attached. Uh, that's because both lines are still attached. We need to select just the one. Uh, an easy way of doing that is just to grab one of the faces, or you can even grab an edge. I'll say you're in face mode and you grab just one of these faces. You can hold the, um, the control key on the keyboard, 
hold the right key on the mouse or the right, right mouse button and go 2UV to 2UV to UV, and it'll convert your faces to UVs or likewise you could have just go into UV mode right here and click one of the UVs. As long as you have something in UV mode um, you can hold the control key again, hold the right key and go to shell and it'll grab the entire UV shell but it also doesn't grab the other side because we've already cut it and so it doesn't go through. Had we not cut it it would have grabbed every UV on this object but now it's only grabbing half the sword so I should be able to take this and slide it apart now because it just took one side of it. So that's the benefit of cutting is that you can divide things pretty easy. Um, now if I were to try and go to let's say let's say UV mode select everything and I go over here to polygons and way at the bottom or I guess middle um, we have unfold. Uh, generally we're going to want to use the options in most cases so I'm going to click the unfold options and there's unfold 3D and legacy. I'm going to go with legacy because that's the earlier versions before 2016 um, and it's a little easier to use. Uh, you could try using Unfold 3D and play with the settings, but Legacy gives you a few more options, so I'm going to go with that option. Um, what Unfold will do is it'll relax all the outer edges and start to create more of a square shape. Um, so I'm going to press Apply, and the first thing you know, notice is that it's um, actually it's set to 5,000 right now. So it's a super large amount and it automatically did everything for you. Sometimes you may want that to be a lot lower on a number so that it doesn't, um, it goes a lot slower on the distortions. I'm gonna take this, 5,000 seemed to have worked this time, but I'm gonna set that to something like 10 so I can go a little bit slower and press enter. So that lowered the iterations down. Um, but I'm gonna go over here to rotate now and rotate this guy straight back upwards so that he looks a little more uh, mirroring to this guy right here. It's a little bit smaller also. I can grab him and scale him a little taller. And again, these move and scale buttons are the same ones as we've been using all along, move, rotate, and scale. Um, so that kind of mostly works, but you can start to see that there's now distortions in here. It's much larger squares and much smaller squares. The handle has distorted a little bit and it's not all uniform anymore. So to correct this, uh, we're going to go over here and fix some of these distortions. So if we go to edge mode, what's causing the distortion is that this little edge and this little edge on the sword is too tight. So if you can picture this, you have this boxy kind of shape and you're trying to press it flat against the ground. You can imagine this is all 3D construction paper and if you try and push it, it there's too much of a cavity, uh, too much of a gap under there. If you slice it right here like this piece of paper, this can peel outwards and this edge can peel outwards as well and it makes it much easier to lay flat on the surface, but if you don't cut it, it can't lay flat in which case you get distortions. So I'm going to take these two edges and again the same option, polygons, cut UV edge, and that'll cut. You don't see the change because it does, it's still overlapping, but I can go to UV mode, select these, hold control, hold right click and go to shell and it selects everything for me. Otherwise I could have just zoomed out really really far and just dragged my mouse across and grabbed everything. But sometimes it's easier to just click shell. Now if I were to try this at an iteration of 10, you'll notice the handle should stretch apart a little bit more and should help tweak this. So I press apply and you can see that it's gradually starting to fix that every click that I make. And the more I click it, you can see that it's correcting it more and more. I'm going to do the same to the other side now, and you can see that it's opening and splitting like it's a piece of paper. It's opening it apart now, which makes it balance a little more. Here I can't do that, so it's distorting. So let's go to edge, this one and this one, and I might as well repeat for this side as well, and for this side as well. If you have a different sword design, you may have to cut other edges than what I have. Um, let me go over here to polygons and cut UV edges. Alright, and let's go to UV mode. I'll zoom out, grab everything, and start applying the unfold. And as I keep clicking and clicking, it should square out more and more. Sometimes you still may get some distortions like right here. Uh, to account for that, 
we could, let's say, take these and scale these. Actually, let's do one at a time so they don't... Um, there we go. Looks a little better. So the bigger we make this, the more uniform these squares get to this one. They're distorting a lot, but that's fine. Um, and I don't want to grab this because it's going to grab both of them. So now I can just grab part of this, hold control, hold right click, and go to shell. And now it'll select the whole thing for me, and it's easier than trying to drag across and hit the other object. Go to move and slide this out of the way. Now I can just grab the top and go to scale, which is R, a little bit bigger, and make it something about that size again, so that this back side is also a larger square proportion. Now once I've done that, I can select everything and apply again, and it'll automatically start correcting everything for us and apply a couple more times and you can see it's automatically shrinking it to a, um, a scale that should work better but sometimes it'll keep making this too large and this too small and it kind of off centers it. Uh, what you could do is slide this to let's say a global solver and apply that and it'll do a different algorithm to calculate the stretching. Um, and then sometimes once it's gone too big and it usually distorts it I can slide it back down to the other direction apply it with one press of the button and see how that looks. It looks pretty accurate. Now I can try it again and that looks pretty decent. Maybe two or three more times. So now it's starting to look a little bit too large. So we're going to call it good right there. The objective is to try and make the squares look as uniform as possible without any distortions. And as you can see now it looks pretty uniform. If we look at the sides uh, you can see they're still mostly square but this cut line where we sliced they may not match and that's fine. They don't have to match as long as they're, the squares that you see look square shaped. And so uh, the seam right here is going to be a problem for when we color it and texture it because they may not match anymore. So generally you want to hide these seams in places you won't look. But this should be fine for now. So I'm going to take this and scale it proportionally a little bit bigger so it looks like the other side. Move the two of these next to each other to make things a little more organized. Make sure you keep everything inside of the uh, 0 to 1 ratio. So 0 to 1 right here and then 0 to 1. This would be 0 to negative 1. And this would be 0 down to negative 1 again. So 0 to 1 of the positive will always be the upper right corner. And that's how we're going to assign our texture maps. So once we've done that, we can see that, let's say object mode, right click object mode. Uh, everything looks pretty proportional, pretty even. Okay, so now let's color this, now that we have our material or our texture showing that it's pretty accurate in proportion. I'm going to take this guy, and inside of the UV editor, I can go to Polygons, UV Snapshot, and down here, it'll create a snapshot image of the 0 to 1 coordinate. And you can see here, 0 to 1. Uh, you could modify things, but pretty much always you're going to use 0 to 1. Um, we're going to say the browse and I'm going to put this on the desktop. I'm going to call this sword tutorial UVs and save. And that won't actually save yet. You'll have to actually press OK to get it to save. So in the meantime let's keep adjusting. I'm going to pick a texture size of um, 1024. Usually you want to go in powers of twos such as 2, 4, 4 goes to 8, um, 8 and 16, 16 is 32, 64, and some of these numbers may sound familiar like a 32 gig USB drive, 64 gig USB drive, or maybe you've heard of 128 gig SSD hard drive or 256. These are all powers of 2 and generally textures should be in powers of 2. So the 256 was default, double that you're going to get 512 and 512 times 2 is 1024. So again that's a power of 2 based on that 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 ratio. So I'm going to use 1024. The higher the number you go, the better texture quality you get, but it's also going to lag your game if you have gigantic 4096s on your texture maps. Uh, most game engines aren't going to run that much um, texture resolution. Uh, maybe later years when they have higher hardware, you can run 4096, but it's, most games aren't going to be that high. So 1024 is a pretty good number for that. Um, but again, it depends on what your engine can run and what console or hardware you're going to put it on. So we're going to press OK. And that 
should have saved a file for us on the desktop called the UVs. Also, I saved it as an if format, which I'd rather not save as an if format. So let me go back to that UV snapshot and change my if, because I forgot to change this. Um, we're going to put this as, and you can pick a couple different options. Uh, target is usually a common one. It keeps full resolution. Sometimes you can go with um, bitmaps. Uh, you could also try TIFFs, uh, but I'm going to go with Targa. So now I'm going to press OK again, and now I should have saved it as a Targa TGA file. And this is um, actually saved in the Maya settings, I guess, because it reset the settings when I saved it. So browse, set this to desktop this time, sword UVs, delete off that, save, and then set this to Targa, which it already is, and then press OK. So now it's saved to the desktop. So now I have two on the desktop and one of the default Maya folder. All right, so now that I have this, let's go click on the folder, and I should have the swordUVs.targa. Now if I double click on this, it should default right into Photoshop for me, and here's where I can color it. Um, I want to reverse the colors though, I'd rather have black lines on top of white, so if I press the shortcut is Control i will inverse your colors. That's going to be under, um, actually I don't really know all these because I just know the shortcuts. But uh, it's probably going to be adjustments, invert color. There we go, control I. All right, so once we have this, we can start coloring whatever we want on the sword. Uh, the layer by default is locked, um, but that's fine. I'm going to make a new layer anyway, and I'm going to draw on the new one. And I can put, let's say, brush tool, which is right there. And I can pick, let's say, red color. And I can draw right on top here, and I can have whatever I want on the sword. Uh, usually it's helpful to have these line sitting on top of your drawing, like you can see I'm drawing on top of that and it's kind of hard to tell if I'm inside the line or not. Uh, so if I double click on the background to unlock it, it's going to say new layer, zero is fine, and now I can take the zero layer and left mouse drag it above layer one, so now layer zero is on the top, and if I click on layer one and I try and draw, you can see nothing's being drawn, but you can still see red right there. Now if I click on layer zero, and change normal down to, let's say, you could, you could try overlay. I'm going to try multiply. And as I do multiply, it takes this, anything black will stay, anything white will disappear. And now I can see that if I go back to this layer, wherever I draw, I'm still seeing the black lines through my drawing. And that makes it easier to see what I'm drawing. So I'm going to clear off this by pressing backspace, and that'll erase off my drawing. Actually, I deleted the whole layer too. So let me put that back on there. All right, so now I can draw. Wait, let's drag layer one underneath. And there we go. So now I can draw underneath there. All right, so once I'm here, let's test this. And let's put an A right here. So I've got an A. And if I press File, Save As, I can call this. Um, it's, I guess, a helpful note. It's usually easier to leave this as a PSD. Um, for the game engine, you're going to put this back into Targa, TIFF, or bitmap format, or PNG. But for texturing purposes, it's usually a lot easier just to leave it in the Photoshop format. So I'm going to call this uh, Sword Tutorial PSD. I'll call that. Yeah. I'll press Save. And so now every time I make a change, I can put like a happy smiley face here. Okay, smiley enough. There we go. Now I can press Control S and it automatically saves. If it's a Targa, it's going to say um, there's too many layers and it's going to want to default to PSD. So if you just leave a PSD, it's easier. Now I can go back to the Maya file right here. I don't need the UV editor anymore, so I want to minimize that. I don't need the unfold. I can close that. Um, and let's slide all the way over to Lambert 2. And on Lambert 2, I can say for color, instead of the texture, the checker pattern, let's go back to the main um, menu. I can hold the right click on color and break connection. This will break the checker pattern off of there. Now I can pick a new one by going here and I can pick the file. Um, in this case I can also go PSD for the texture testing purposes. Once I'm happy with the PSD I can save it as target and put that in the game engine. But for now I might as well just pick PSD. But file would work just as fine. So PSD, and then I pick where the PSD is, it's sitting on my desktop. 
sword tutorial PSD, press open, and boom, it popped on. So now I know, as I look at this, uh, there's the A, there's the smiley face, and I've painted uh, selectively whatever I want, wherever I want. So if I go back to Photoshop, I can now paint anything I want, and I know where it's going to appear on my sword because I've pulled off the UV coordinates and I've mapped it out. So let's go figure out some textures now. So I'm going to go pull up this. You could be very painterly and you could take some gray if you want. Uh, and I could start painting the gray on the sword blade. Uh, I could put blue on the handle if I want to. Or I can go, if you don't want to be as painterly in drawing, you can go to some image searching. And I'm going to pull up metal textures. By doing that and going to images, I can look for a fancy looking sword relevant kind of metal texture. So let's say something like this. That's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. That's quite a lot. That should be way more than I need. Uh, let's go view image. Yes, very, very large. Um, that looks fine enough for metal. So I'm going to go uh, right click on this, save image as and drop this on the desktop. It's just easier to find that way. Dirty metal surface, save. All right, now if I pull up my desktop, I should have this dirty metal surface right here. And if I pull up Photoshop and switch back to here, I can drag this into the open area right here. And by default, it opens up as a new window. If you're running um, Photoshop and it pops up as a new tab up here. There's a setting you can turn that off. I don't use it like the tabs or you could drag it down and it pops it off tabs. But it's easier I think when they're separate windows. This way you can drag and drop them. So I'm going to take this and if you wanted to turn that off I guess real quick it's going to be under preferences, um, general, and it's one of these. Maybe it's under it's, it's one of these I don't remember offhand probably under yeah I don't remember but it's going to be somewhere over here it's going to ask you to um, keep frames or keep tabs or not and I, I usually don't like the tabs alright so it's going to take this object and we're going to go to the move command and I'm going to drag this into this window and boom because we did 1024 which is about a thousand pixels and this is 4000 by 3000 this image is much larger than we need right here so I can press Control T on the keyboard, and if I zoom out really far, you can see that uh, the texture is much larger than we need. I can hold the Shift key and grab the corner, and it'll proportionally scale it uh, downwards. I can slide it down to there, and then drag this back over here. If your scroll wheel isn't scrolling for zoom, you can hold the Alt key and scroll. I've again gone to Preferences and set Scroll Wheel Zoom, so I don't have to hold the Alt key to do that. I can rotate this vertical now, and I can hold the shift key and it'll lock in incremental turns. So that's a way to keep it straight. And that looks pretty decent. Looks like I have some metal grain coming down there. And then I can make it a little unproportional to the original drawing and kind of drop this down to fit a little more. So now I have a bit more texture on the blade length. Press enter to confirm that. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's now metal texture on there. Now if I go and press save again, control S on the keyboard, and jump back into Maya, it doesn't automatically update. Uh, if you go to Hypershade and find this new Lambert 2 texture, the one that has our texture on there, hold the right click and go to refresh swatch, and it'll refresh your texture for you. So now you can see we have a metal looking sword. You may also note that there's the black lines on there, and that's because the black lines are carried over from our UV overlay. So if I turn this one off, the one that's multiplying downwards, it'll turn the lines off and it's easier to see what we're looking at. Control S to save. Uh, jump back to here. Right click, refresh swatch, and boom, we've lost the line. So now we have a metal looking sword. Also, you may notice that you can kind of see through the sword. It has kind of this weird transparency issue. Uh, we'll just double click on the texture again and notice that there's a transparency channel automatically turned on. Let's right click and break connection on that. And that turns that off. So now it's no longer a transparent sword. We now have a metal texture on the blade, which looks pretty realistic. I can go into Photoshop and sharpen it if I want to. So let's jump back over here. And let's go filter, sharpen, 
I'll go to sharpen and that'll make the texture a little more sharper. If I control S that, jump back over, right click and refresh, it sharpens up the texture a bit more. So now it looks a little more realistic. Let's jump back over here and turn this back on. Let's say I wanna put a color on this now. So I'm gonna put a new layer and I can color over top this. Let's say I wanted to go blue for example. Um, I can pick the paintbrush or I could even do bucket fill. Uh, I can go to uh, pick the color and say, I'll go for a bluish, purplish, something like a Zelda Master Sword or something. Press OK. And I can put some purple in here. This might take a little lot of paint. Uh, I could try bucket filling and just bucket fill, but it's going to do everything, so we don't want to do that. Um, let me up the brush size a little bit. Uh, it's up here. The shortcut for that is the brackets on the keyboard. Um, and if you paint out of the box, it won't really matter as long as you're pretty close. And for demo purposes, I'm not going to be super accurate. We'll call that good. Uh, holding oops, the uh, space bar will allow you to pan the drawing. So I'm going to paint this as well. That's accurate enough for the demo. All right. So we got a purple handle. I can control S that. Actually, let's turn that off first. Control, actually, and I want to multiply this down so I don't just get a regular color. So by going to multiply, I'll get the blue through the metal. And now I can press control S. I'll tab back over, right click, refresh, and boom, I have a blue color on top of the metal now. If I wanted to put a leather handle on there, let's say I go find some leather now. Jump back over to here and Oops, wrong one. Let's type in leather texture. And find a nice looking leather texture. Uh, something like, sure, we'll go with a light color. And this is 3000 by 2000. Plenty enough texture resolution. I could try something more vertical like this one. It's a much smaller resolution, but more than enough for what we need. Um, or I could try this guy. But this might do it. So let me right click, save link as, or not save link, save image as on the desktop, call this leather, jump back to Photoshop, and the leather texture, drag this in here, and then take this guy, drag him in here using the move tool. Zoom out, control T for transform, hold shift, scale this down really small, and drag this, oops, that was the origin point, or the rotation point, pivot center. And you can see it's really pixelated until we confirm it. And let's scale this inwards, holding shift and alt at the same time, we'll scale it inwards if that's helpful. All right, and just pull that down a little bit more. All right, so now we have leather on here, and I might as well shrink that in a bit more. And we'll press enter to confirm that, and it clears it up. I can go to filter, and the last one I've used is sharpen, so it's on the top of the list. Sharpen it, I can sharpen it again. And it looks a little more realistic. Uh, if I wanna copy that, I can drag this over top of the new layer button. And when I release, it'll make a copy of layer four. I can go to the move command, shortcut is V. I can hold the shift key, and it'll slide it horizontally to the other side, but I also have to move it upwards, it looks like, so I'll slide it upwards. And it looks like it's not quite proportionally the same, so I'm gonna have to control T to transform and stretch a little taller, press enter, and then turn off the textures. Uh, it looks like that one could probably go a little bit lower or put some blue on there, so I'll paint some blue to fill that in. All right, control S, alt tab, eventually to Maya, and then refresh swatch. And I should have a wooden uh, texture on there. And you can see where we cut the sword in half that it's gonna create a seam, and that seam puts a line right there because the two colors aren't matching correctly. Uh, so that's one thing to take into account. And you can Photoshop this for a little while and try and make that disappear and match your two colors on the end if you wanted to. And there's ways to do that. Um, let's jump back to Photoshop. If I wanted to do that, I'd have to 
uh, do a couple extra steps. And that might take a little bit of a while, so I'll, I'll hold off on that. Um, but otherwise, you can see that as we uh, apply textures, if you wanted to put some kind of logo on the sword, for example, we could go to, let's say, engravings. And I can pick some fancy pictures, let's say something like this. And let's say that one's cool, we'll go to save image to the desktop. Engravings. Take this into Photoshop. And then pick one that I like, let's say this one. And let's... V, so that was the lasso tool L, which is lasso V for move. Drag this into here, and I can turn this layer to multiply, so it goes through the metal. I can turn on the UV so I know where I'm putting it. I can hold or pick Control T to transform, hold Shift so it locks vertically in that position, hold the uh, Shift and Alt so it scales centered, and then kind of move that into the center a little bit. A little bit more. Okay, so now we have some kind of fancy pattern right there. Uh, if I wanted that on both sides, I can again drag this layer onto there, move it over to there, and I can nudge it with the keyboard, the keypad arrow keys, and turn off this one and control S again, jump back to here, and refresh the swatch. Boom. So now I have a little bit of a stencil on there. And you can keep playing around with this and decorate this as much as you want. And that's how you can color something uh, inside of Photoshop and update the colors here in Maya. Rather than just putting straight colors, I have textures on here now. And that should conclude how to unwrap the colors or unwrap the UVs and color the sword. When you're all done, just save it and you have a sword. We'll export this later to put this into the game engine.